Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array. For those of us who make videos, we always want to produce the highest possible quality. But there's times in the editing process that all that's going through our mind is, wow, what was I thinking? This shot looks terrible. If that's ever been you, the solution is reshoot. Just reshoot your footage. But there are times when you can't, like when you had one opportunity to shoot with a client and now they're gone, like they're on a plane flying to somewhere else. That's actually happened to me before. If that's you and you can't reshoot, I want to share with you five quick ideas on how you can make bad videos look good, or at least better. Number one, out of focus video. Now, unless you have access to some crazy new upcoming camera equipment, you're not going to be able to choose your focus after the fact. But there are ways in editing that you can make it less noticeable. There's two different kinds of out of focus video that we're talking about. There's soft when your subject is discernible, but they're not really tack sharp. And then there's holy cow, what were you doing kind of out of focus. In order to salvage any of it, we're talking about that first one. There's two different ways to make your soft focus less noticeable, and you can use them both together in order to get a better result. Step one is to use the sharpen effect. In your Lumetri color panel and under the creative section, there's a slider for sharpen. You can increase the slider to achieve a post sharpening. The second piece is to mask around your subject and add a blur. This basically makes your subject look more in focus by comparison to the background. Duplicate your footage and stack it directly on top of itself. On the top clip, mask around your subject and keep them in the shot. Underneath on your bottom clip, add your blur. This will blur out everything that your mask didn't include. Less is more with this, so keep it subtle. It looks bad at first, but here's where you play around with the mask feather to make it more naturally fade towards your subject. Oh, and if you use sharpening with this effect, make sure that you sharpen both copies of your footage. Otherwise, it'll be really noticeable. It goes without saying, the more your subject moves, the more work you're going to have to do. And the more likely it is you'll have to bring your shot into After Effects. And if there's people or objects on the same focal plane as your subject, you're going to have to account for that too. Number two, shaky video. Now, this one is thankfully a lot easier because Premiere Pro has built into it basically the equivalent of an unlimited supply of duct tape. It's called Warp Stabilizer. If you've got unnecessarily shaky footage that you want to settle down, this is your tool. Select the clip that you need to stabilize and search in your effects panel for Warp Stabilizer. Throw it on and let it do its magic. For the best results, may I suggest, select Detailed Analysis, Enhance Reduction of Rolling Shutter, and drop the smoothness to way below 50%. Test out what you like, but i found that anything between 1 to 5% can actually still look amazing and keep your footage looking like it was never tampered with. If you push this effect too much, you might start to get a jello effect, which doesn't look that great. You can also do this for footage that's not really that shaky, but just adding a little warp stabilizer can give you absolutely smooth feel. Number 3. Overexposed Video this is one of the things that can give you the most trouble in the editing room. It's less because it looks kind of bad, and more so because when you overexpose a shot, what's happening is that your camera sees everything that's white as just that, pure white. Everything else in the shot has information that can be manipulated, raised and lowered and nuanced, but your overexposed sections are permanently white, forever, unless they're not. Your mileage may vary, but here's what to do with an overexposed shot. Start by going to your Lumetri color section, then lower your exposure and see if at any point you can bring back detail from the white sections of your clip. If you can, awesome! Here's what you do next. Take your highlight slider and drop it down until you see it start to show detail in the whites. You can also try using curves and see if you can get any luck by lowering the highlight section. It'll start to impact other sections of your clip though, and if it does, but you still need to push it farther, try duplicating your clip masking around the overexposed area, and then push the highlight drop even more. Make sure to feather it like crazy, otherwise it'll look even worse than being overexposed. But if your overexposed sections are stuck at pure white and you can't get any detail back, you may be forced to become a VFX wizard and composite something fake in. Or number four, embrace mistakes for style. Sometimes when your shot is broken by something that's really distracting and you can't fix it, the only thing left is to be confident and say, no, I totally meant to do that. It was an artistic choice. But how do you go about doing that? Take what's wrong in the shot and then start to go through the natural logic. If parts of your shot are overexposed, then you've likely got a lot of light in the shot. Boom! 
add some light leaks. Now it's not overexposed, it's heavenly. Is your shot too dark? Maybe your subject is brooding with their inner conflict. So push it to the max and maybe even add some stylized glitches and grunge. The key is that sometimes when your footage is just beyond recovery, you have to get creative and just be confident. Maybe it wasn't the best shot, but you are still a great filmmaker and you can figure out a way to still make it work within the confines of your project. But sometimes the exact opposite can be true. Sometimes you just have to go with number five, hide your mistake with distractions. See what I did there? Did you even notice that the word mistake was spelled incorrectly? Ha ha, clever. Some things are really hard to say that they were intentional, like a lot of noise in your shot, or a white balance that's way too far off. If you don't want to or can't pay for solutions like denoising software, then one solution is to add overlays on top of your video. This could be stuff like fake film grain or dust or scratches. This can sometimes hide undesired elements like noise, among other elements that distract your audience from seeing the mistake. Another example is if your coloring is just really distracting and hard to salvage, you can go with the stylish option of black and white. Hide your problem altogether. Really, at the end of the day, filmmaking is actually a lot of problem solving. If you have something that's broken and you can't fix it, how can you get creative to still be able to present it? But that's just my take on the topic. Those are my five ideas on how you can fix bad or broken footage. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, then we got tons of other tutorials over at motionarray.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.